What's up, everyone? Yohozi here. Got a quick one for you today, but something that has been uh, on my mind a lot recently. Uh, as you know, Evo Japan just ended, and we're hearing a lot of stories about how uh, it was ran and the general experience of the players. Um, I'm actually not going to talk about that because I think that other players who are actually there have more to say. Uh, instead, I'm going to take a positive spin on this and use this as an excuse to show you how to run a bracket. So let's say you have a bracket. Now really quick, one of the first things I wanna get into with this video, I wanna clarify exactly what this video is. This video is not intended to teach you how to run a tournament, to teach you how to run a regional, to run a bracket with your friends. This is, you are a volunteer at Evo, at Combo Breaker, at CEO, maybe another two person elimination game if you do like card games or, or something, I think they do Ron Robin. But in general, you're running a two person elimination bracket. All fighting game brackets, for the most part, at majors are like this. Uh, essentially, you show up, you get a piece of paper, and they say, cool, you're in pool A, uh, go run pool A from 2 to 4, and I'll see you at the end and turn it in, right? Pretty intimidating thing to be confronted with, uh, but there is a way to handle it eloquently, and this video is intended to uh, show you how to do that, yeah? So here in front of me, we have a bracket. It is zoomed out. We will be zooming in right now. Um, basically, the way that this bracket works, this is a standard bracket you will see on a sheet of paper. Yes, there will be brackets where the winner's on top uh, and the loser's is on the bottom. That is a web interface. When you go to an event, you will not be given, for the most part, a smartphone um, or a tablet or a start DG bracket, right? Internet at these venues is intermittent. Paper brackets are what it's all about. You will be using paper. You'll be filling it out, handing it into the TO desk, and they will be validating that your tournament was won properly. Say, cool, give you a thumbs up, and you are good to go. So this bracket is what you will see 99% of the time. Sometimes it'll have more spaces. Sometimes it won't. But this is, in general, how it looks and how it will function. Um, so in this case, if you count these uh, players, uh, this is a 16-man bracket. So... Um, Generally, brackets are run as 16 or 32. Uh, 16 is, is usually the most common, so we'll use a 16 here, and it's simpler and easier to show. 32, I, I'm not gonna overwhelm you with names and numbers. Um, the foundations of how to run a bracket are the same regardless. Um, and yeah, it, it just isn't worth showing. So we're, we're gonna stick with 16 in a three-out bracket. Um, so in this bracket, you have two main things. Uh, you have your first column here. These are your initial matches. These are the matches that you need to run first, and they are already set up for you. Losers will migrate to the left. Winners will migrate to the right. If you notice at a distance, if I zoom out, there are many more losers brackets than winners brackets. That's because if you stay in winners, right, you need to only win one, two, three matches. And then in this one, you are guaranteed to get out of the pool in a three out, which we'll talk about. On the loser side, if you lose your first match, yes, it'll be one, two, three, four, five matches that you need to win all of them to get out because the loser of this match is out of the tournament. So at a grand scale, there will be much more losers matches than winners matches. And that's how tournaments are designed. So when we get into the mechanics of the timing for running a bracket, we'll talk about um, exactly what that looks like. But for now, let's just focus on the actual navigation and running of the bracket. Uh, so here, we have all of our players, yes? Before we do anything, really quickly, uh, these are players, and then these right here, are F and H, these are buys. What buys are is they're done for seating purposes or they're done because there are not enough players to completely fill the bracket. Buys are basically auto wins for the other opponent. Um, you would treat buys as if you would a, uh, a, a normal loss of a match, yes? So the first thing you do when you get a bracket is you want to go ahead and take your buys, and if they're not already done, move them into your loser's bracket and move your winners, your opponent that received buys onward. Yes? So we're just gonna do that really quick. Again, the loser in this case is the buy is going to the left. The winner is going to the right. This match is now completed, okay? So after these buys are written down, we'll go up here 
we have May from State Farm versus 5Ds. In this case, we'll have 5Ds win. I believe that was written in originally. I apologize. I just deleted that. Uh, May from State Farm will go to losers, okay? Now, when this match happens, you want to record the match numbers. And again, we'll get into this. This is a very basic overview. If you know the absolute basics of running brackets, skip ahead. I'll, I'll put the timestamp right here on the screen. Uh, it's also in the comments below. I always comment my videos. Um, we'll call this a 3-1, or excuse me, a 1-3. So 5D's 1. In this case, uh, I think Hot Dog is a better name than Monster Mash. So I'm just going to move these appropriately, and we'll call this a 3-0. Uh, lost my mind. We'll say one over bonus coon. So uh, lost my mind. One three to two versus bonus coon. Sick nasty versus soluble blob guy. Soluble blob guy is an incredible name. I'm very proud of that one. So we'll have soluble blob guy win over sick nasty. Now we have Ryu versus mortal wombat. Uh, Ryu is a warrior, so Ryu will win over mortal wombat. Uh, Burger flip has already advanced because of the buy. Akuma versus Ligmaga. Uh, Ligmaga, I will refuse to say your name, so I will move you to S as the loser, and Akuma can move on. At this point, you as the bracket runner would have run one, two, three, four, five, six matches. Okay, we're just getting started, and again, you you might be saying, Don, like, but I, I want to get into like, how do I call matches? How do I blah blah? Don't worry about that. Just just watch along. Watch along for now. It'll be okay, because this is an important thing that every beginner bracket runner gets wrong. Now, when you run brackets, yes, you always want to keep losers moving ahead of winners, because in losers there's five matches, in winners there's three. So we're not gonna do these matches right now. We're gonna move on to P, Q, R, and S. In this case, yes, your buys are already figured out. Ligmaga is moved on regardless of what's happened. Yes, Ligmaga, we went th three, zero effectively over the buy. You don't need to write that, but basically that's in effect what this is saying, yes? So Ligmaga, one over, one over them. Let me zoom in a little bit more here now that we're starting to get into the nitty gritty details. Um, we have uh, Mortal Wombat, which obviously advanced over the buy, so that match is complete. If we scroll up, we'll have a Bonus Coon win over Sick Nasty, so Bonus Coon has moved on. At this point, Sick Nasty is out of the tournament. They are eliminated. They are in the loser side of the bracket, and they are done for. They're, they're done. They're over. See you, see you next time. Enjoy your two matches. You win 0-2. It happens. Uh, Monster Mash will say win 3 over May from State Farm. Uh, because that name is long, and I don't want to clog these brackets with long names. So these matches have all been ran. Yes, all of these matches are completed. Now what we're going to do is run the winner side, and this is where you need to pay attention. So this is where people make a tremendous amount of mistakes. This is the hardest part about running the actual bracket. There's a lot more that's complicated on like the people side, but I'm running the bracket. If you have five Ds here and he wins over hot dog, yes, you advance five Ds and you say, great, hot dog has lost. I'll move them to losers. And this side, if I zoom out, right, this is the loser side and they're up here. So I'm going to put them here. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you do this, if I were to move Hot Dog to loser of L, what do we have? We have a double elimination. Hot Dog already beat Monster Mash. Monster Mash beat May from State Farm. Now Hot Dog and Monster Mash have to fight again. This is double elimination. This should not happen in bracket, okay? What we're instead gonna do is we're gonna look at this loser of L, loser of K, loser of J, and loser of I, yes? These are critically important. When you get to the first round of winners, the losers flip. So if 5Ds won over Hot Dog, 5Ds advances, yes. Hot Dog, as the loser of I, goes to the bottom of the bracket. And this, by the way, losers of X and Y and Z and J, that'll all be written here. So it'll be written, uh, don't worry too much about it, okay? It'll be written, it's kind of like fill in the blanks, yes? Lost my mind, soluble blob, blob guy. Let's say that Soluble Blob Guy won 3-2 over Lost My Mind. We will advance Soluble Blob Guy. We will advance in Losers. Lost My Mind. Yes, Loser of J, Loser of J, Lost My Mind. 
Ryu versus Burger Flip. Ryu has won 3 1 over Burger Flip. Burger Flip goes here. Ryu goes here. Akuma versus Ultra Gamer. Akuma, Ultra Gamer. Akuma moves on as the loser of L. Ultra Gamer goes here. Okay? Congratulations. If you have done this, you have completed the hardest part about running a physical bracket. This is where most players get things wrong. Please, for the love of God, do this, or you will have to rerun the entire bracket. It'll be embarrassing. Please, please, please read these losers of L, J, K, J, I, whatever the numbers have to be, whatever the, the, the letters have to be, please read these and move people appropriately. Okay? So now we're getting down into the thick of it. There's only one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight matches left. You have already completed like 10 to 12 to 13 matches, depending on your buys. Congratulations, you're over halfway done with the bracket. At this point, we should be reaching about 30 to 45 minutes if we're running well. If we're running behind, if you're about an hour in, it happens. Um, but we'll get into time management soon. So um, Mortal Wombat versus Lost My Mind. Let's go ahead and just and start moving these losers matches ahead. Yes, because again, you want to run losers over winners. We'll get to that with time management. Uh, let's say that in this case, Monster Mash beat Ultra Gamer, so Monster Mash moves on. Bonus Kun beats uh, Burger Flip. Actually, I'll, I'll switch this because I have a lot of top winning. Uh, Burger Flip beat Bonus Kun. Uh, Burger Flip. Uh, Mortal Wombat beat Lost My Mind. And uh, Hot Dog beat Lig Ligma. I think it's Ligmaga, actually. I think I typed that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh hot dog one okay uh so this these matches are now decided in this case i think it is the right decision if we were running an actual bracket to run all these matches simultaneously for now i'll continue in losers just to hammer ha hammer home that you need to run losers first yes also i had five d's written here i, I deleted it i i apologize um so we'll have hot dog win over mortal wombat hot dog moves on we have a uh, burger flip win over Monster Mash. And let's go to the winner side. Yes, we'll have five Ds win over Soluble Blob Guy. So five Ds is now in winner's finals. And in Ryu versus Akuma, uh, we'll have Ryu win versus uh, Akuma in a, in a blowout match. So Ryu, yes. So Akuma lost this match. So we go to loser of N. And Akuma goes here. Why did Akuma not go here? We flipped it before. Why now? Well, it's because it helps prevent double eliminations. All you have to know is the bracket runner is this says loser of N. So you put the damn loser of N into loser of N. Okay. That's all you need to remember. In this situation, 5Ds beat soluble blob, blob guy. So blob guy will move here. 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two, three, two. It'll be uh, hot Akuma versus soluble blob guy you kind of get the gist by now the basics uh we'll add a column here to make this a uh a three two victory for soluble blob guy okay on this side we'll have a three two from five d's over ryu now this is three out which we'll explain very shortly Actually, I'll just explain it right now. The way three out works is that uh, normally in a two out bracket, the loser of this would go here and fight again the winner of this. Um, most tournaments now do three out. It just makes more sense. It honestly feels better for the players and it prevents double eliminations. So in this case, um, both these players will advance to losers. Uh, excuse me. They will advance to, in this case, top 48. So we'll have five Ds in Ryu. And in this side, soluble blob guy one. Soluble Blob Guy. This is a bracket. This is about an hour and a half. If you're really nice with it, about 45 minutes. This is what it looks like on a mechanical level, yes? You run the matches, you record the score, you move people along, you respect your buys. Does it get more complicated? Yes. If you have watched this and you say, Don, I get it, I understand, cool. Let's get to the actual difficult mechanics of running a bracket because they are quite difficult, um, but they're easy to figure out. And the good thing about running a bracket is as long as you run it within two hours, it's fine. Like you did your job. We're going to get into how do you run your bracket as efficiently as possible to make the best experience for the players, to make the best experience for the TO desk, and to make the best experience for you. Yes? 
So we have a repeat of the exact same bracket. In that previous bracket, we ignored a lot of things. Um, players showed up on time, for example. Uh, players played their matches when they were supposed to. There were no DQs. Everything ran smoothly. We're going to get into what happens when there's DQs. Uh, how do you optimize stations to be played at the at the the maximum? How do you optimize stations to be played for the maximum amount of time to ensure that there's the most games running, while also getting yourself not confused? So um, let's first start with checking in. So when you check in players, yes, you get to your pool. I would say 10 to 15 minutes ahead of time. You have your clipboard in your hand. The paper bracket is printed on top. You need to announce to everyone that's around your pool that you are the check-in. You are the TO for that bracket. So you need to scream or say extremely loudly or get a megaphone if you can't scream. Check-in pool two. If you are in pool two, please talk to me. People come up. They say, hi, my name is Burger Flip. What you are responsible for doing is checking that person in, Okay. If you're checking in Burger Flip, I want you to put a physical check mark next to that name that says they are there. Yes? So I am going to insert a check mark, okay? And I'm going to put it right alongside their name. Burger Flipped has checked in. Akuma has checked in. Ligmaga has checked in. Ultra Gamer has not checked in. Bonus Kun has checked in. 5Ds checked in. Monster Mash checked in. Mortal Wombat checked in. We are now one minute away from bracket start. Matches can officially start in one minute. What I want you to do is scream. This is bracket two or whatever bracket number you're using. We're about to get started. If you have not checked in, please check in. Ryu's over there talking to uh, his friend uh, Chun-Li and he goes, oh, sorry, I've checked in. May from State Farm also hears you and checks in. The time is now 2 p.m. We have all these matches that can be run and all these matches that can't. Yes, Hot Dog has not checked in. Lost My Mind has not checked in. Both Sick Nasty and Soluble Blob Guy have not checked in. And Alter Gamer has not checked in. All these other matches have checked in, right? You are now ready to start. Before you start, you have a few housekeeping things to do, okay? You should do this right before the, the time starts. The earlier you do it, the better, but we're just going to do it now because we're going to start writing things in, yes? You need to, as we did last time, advance your buys. So Ultra Gamer, even though Ultra Gamer is not here, it's a buy. It's fine. Ultra Gamer moves on. Yes, the buy moves here. Okay? This match is completed. It is done. When I do a match, I usually record that the match is being played or has been played. So I'm going to actually insert a little drawing here of a square, because that's what I use. Uh, we'll go into why I do this in a moment, but for now, I'm just doing this for my own purposes, because this is how I run a bracket. In my mind, that match was run, so I'm gonna put my marker down personally that shows that that match has been run or is running. So I've marked down here with a square that I found online. I, I normally wouldn't mark it like this, but it's mechanics of Excel, so you'll have to excuse me. Uh, I have marked Alter Gamer vs. Buy as having been played. I will also mark here Burger Flip and Buy have also been played. I will advance Burger Flip. I will move Buy down the bracket. Now, when you run a tournament, there will generally be four setups. Sometimes there's three. God forbid it's one. Uh, but usually there'll be three or four setups, most often four. This is to allow you to run the maximum matches possible. So what I would do in this situation, you have four setups not being used. If people are playing casuals on those setups, tell them to get the f*** up. It's time for the tournament. It's time to play. It's time to ball. Um, you want to call the matches that are available. Right now, May from State Farm and 5 E's can play. What I want you to do is point at a actual PlayStation, point at a setup, and say, 5Ds and May from State Farm, loud as you can, okay? May from State Farm, 5Ds, play here. They'll sit down, they'll play the match. It's that easy. It's super simple, but one thing that you don't want to do, okay? This is very important. You don't want to call players' names while they're playing on the setup. I have made this mistake Many times before I implemented the system, you'll forget you're busy. People are talking to you. They're saying, I got to go to the bathroom. I, I'm out. Where are we at in the bracket? Can I see the bracket? Um, the main thing that you are responsible for is the health of that bracket and the experience for the players. When people are playing, I want you to mark on your piece of paper that they're playing with some sort of symbol. 
in this case, I will do it with a square because I'm on Excel. Normally, I'll put a, a square very small. I just can't do it here. Um, that shows that that match is currently and actively being played, okay? Don't call players as they're playing. It feels really bad and it's confusing. Now, in a real match, right, if you're running a real bracket, you're not going to know the result of this match for, God, I don't know, like 15 minutes, right? You, They have to play still. It's going to be a 10-minute match or whatever, depending on the game. Uh, you have to call the rest of these matches. So who else can play here? Ryu and Mortal Wombat. They can play. Ryu and Mortal Wombat, you are on this setup. Go play that setup. Akuma and Ligmaga, you play on this setup. At this point, we have run every match that we can afford to run because these are the players that are here. That's very common. Not every setup will be used at exactly 2 o'clock or whenever your bracket starts. That's okay. Run what you can run. As these matches are running... Sick Nasty says, oh my god, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm here. Am I DQ'd? You say, no. I'll check you in. Your opponent is not here. At the same time, let's say Sick Nasty gets here, right? And says, I'm here. Sorry I'm late. You say, cool, no problem. Your opponent's here also. Sick Nasty, insoluble bad guy, you're going to be playing on this station because they're, you know, like, right next to you and you don't have to scream your head off. I'm going to mark them as playing. Done. At this point, all of your matches are being played. It is now five to ten minutes at their bracket starts. Pretty common situation. Two players are not here. Lost my mind, hot dog, and actually Ultra Gamer has not checked in. But Ultra Gamer has a pass, right? Because he has a buy. Now at this point, uh, you should know ahead of time uh, how exactly long do I have before I DQ players? You can't hold matches forever. You can't hold these people forever. You have to DQ them at some point. When do you do it? Is it 10 minutes after? Is it 15 minutes after? Your TO will know. If you don't know, ask them. Uh, it's important information, probably the most critical piece of information. I have never run a bracket without a DQ, okay? So let's say, uh, in this case, it has been 10 minutes. Your DQ limit is 15 minutes, yes? May from State Farm has won over five Ds. You write May from State Farm. You write five Ds. How do you know that they win? It is their obligation to report to you. They will come up and tell you. Now, when people come up to you and say, I won, it happens every time. You need to make sure, I don't know who you are. Say your name and the score. It was May from State Farm. It was 3-1 over 5Ds. Thank you very much. May from State Farm over 5Ds. You have advanced both players. After you write these down, you want to do a quick check and go, did I do this properly? May from State Farm 1, 5Ds lost. Yes, this is proper. This is correct. We are validated, okay? At this point, you now have a free setup, but no matches to run. That's okay. You are responsible for staying organized over anything else. Yes. Sick Nasty over Soluble Blob Guy. Sick Nasty 1, 3, 2. Sick Nasty moves on. Soluble Blob Guy moves back. Okay. This match still can't be played. We're at 10 minutes. We have not DQ'd anyone yet. We move on. We keep living another day. Ryu versus Mortal Wombat. Ryu won. 3 1. Ryu moves on. Mortal Wombat moves backwards. Now, this is something that's critically important in my mind. You want to do the things that you know are, are truths before you start new things. That may sound counterintuitive. Don't you want people playing on the setups as long as possible? It is better to be slow and accurate than to be fast and inaccurate, right? Slow is steady and steady is fast. If you go ahead and you see this match and you immediately call Ryu versus Burger Flip, and then like 20 minutes later, you're like, oh my God, wait, Mortal Wombat had a buy and I never noticed because I didn't automatically move him forward. And he's just been sitting there for 30 minutes, not able to play. You need to move Mortal Wombat past the buy immediately, okay, before you call this match. This match is not important right now. Keeping the bracket accurate is important. Mortal Wombat moves on. The buy is quote-unquote eliminated. You move on with your life. Akuma versus Ligmata. Excuse me. Akuma versus Ligmaga. Akuma wins 3-0. Akuma moves on. Ligmaga moves to losers. Again, we have this buy. Ligmaga moves on. Yes. At this point, we are 10 minutes in. 
let's take a quick survey on what is available to run. This match cannot be run. This match cannot be run. This match cannot be run. This match has already ran. This match can be run. This match, excuse me, cannot be run. This match cannot be run. This match cannot be run. We are now, let's say, one minute away from DQ. I want you to scream at the top of your lungs. Last minute warning, DQ for pool two. If you have not checked in, you will be DQ'd if you do not talk to me, okay? You have to move this bracket on. In this situation, the tournament says 15 minutes after start. You need to get them DQ'd. Uh, Post-editing, Dawn, something I forgot to mention is that when you do this announcement, you need to say the player names. I want you to scream at the top of your lungs. Will the following players please check in? Ultra Gamer, Sick Nasty, Ryu, and Mortal Wombat. Those aren't the exact names. But in general, you just want to scream their names. Maybe they're not paying attention. Maybe they're in another pool. Uh, maybe they're lost. Scream their names. Give them a chance. You want to do this as you DQ them to give them like a last hey, last second warning, um, and also a, hey, if you're around and you're at the wrong pool, you have a chance to talk to me. Scream their names at the top of the lungs. Maybe they checked in and you missed them. Oops, it happens. If you scream their names, at least they're not DQ'd. But you can run a match really quickly. Yes, you have this one, Ryu versus Burger Flip. Burger Flip has not yet paid, played because he had a buy. We will have Ryu and Burger Flip start fighting. Yes, so now out of all of these matches, only one setup is being used. Do you see why we DQ people after 10 to 15 minutes? I do. Let's start DQing people. The time is now 15 minutes. It is your responsibility. When you DQ people, what I want you to do is to sit down and if people walk up to you, tell them to shut the hell up. It is your responsibility to fill out these brackets and make sure your DQs are accurate. Yes. The DQing process is the fastest your tournament and your bracket will ever go. You do not want to make a mistake. I've been in situations when I ran DNF Duel at Evo, uh, excuse me, when I ran a bracket for DNF Duel at Evo, let's, let me clarify. Um, I was in a situation where I had 18 DQs out of like 32 people. I had to sit down for 10 minutes and just write names and verify that everything was correct. You need to do the same. Spend three minutes, write the DQs, double check, make sure your tournament has run accurately up to this far. In this case, hot dog. DQ'd. What do you write in the scores? You literally write DQ. Yes? You are disqualified. You move to losers. Monster Mash moves on. Lost my mind. DQ'd. Bonus Kun moves on. And, and by the way, it doesn't really matter what order you put the names in here. Uh, it, it's... I try to be consistent and keep like the winners on the top and the loser side on the bottom. Um, meaning that like, uh, if you're down here, right, like soluble blob guy can stay here and the loser of the winner goes, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. As long as the names are accurate, whatever system works best for you works best for you. So they lost my mind was DQ'd. Lost my mind moves there. Yes. Mortal Wombat is here. Ultra Gamer is here. So the only other DQ left is Ultra Gamer. Now in this case, this is where we get to Bracket Runner's discretion. Yes, because Ultra Gamer technically advanced because of a buy, but they aren't here yet. So it's not the first round. Do you DQ them? Well, let's take a quick scan of where we're at in the bracket. Yes, we have no losers matches able to be played, which is very common because Hot Dog uh, is DQ'd and Lost My Mind is DQ'd. So the Q and P cannot be played, yes. I and J can be played, K is actively being played, and because V and W both had a buy, uh, they cannot be played, yes? So we are in a situation where only three people are running setups. Does it matter if you move them to losers now? Well, if you move them to losers now, right, the loser of L will be here. Um, there's a situation here as a bracket runner, and this is kind of a see into the future, where five Ds played May from State Farm first, they had to wait five minutes for Hot Dog to be DQ'd into losers, and then they had to wait another five minutes for Hot Dog to be DQ'd forever, and then the loser of L is a, like Ultra Gamer, and then because Ultra Gamer is the loser of L, they have to wait again. Uh, that's a long time to wait. That's an unfortunate situation and an unfortunate uh, pull from 5Ds. I'm going to like be as blunt as possible and say that if they're in winner's side, um, I would DQ them nine out of ten times, unless all the setups are being used, which is pretty rare. Um, so in this case, I am going to DQ Ultra Gamer and move Akuma on in the bracket. Yes. So loser of N, excuse me, loser of L is Ultra Gamer. 
Okay. All of our DQs has been processed. Yes. At this point, I would say May from State Farm and Monster Mash on this setup. Sick Nasty and Bonus Coon on this setup. Good luck. They play it out. Yes. At this point, Ryu and Burger Flip are come to report their matches. Ryu says, I won. You say, who the f*** are you? And they say, oh, I'm Ryu. And you say, okay, cool. 3-1 over Burger Flip. Ryu moves on. Burger Flip, loser of K. Yes. At this point, it is now five minutes after the first DQ. I would DQ everyone in losers. Every tournament is going to have different rules about this. Do you DQ them from winners and then losers? Do you just DQ them out of the tournament? I run things very smoothly, so I tend to gravitate towards DQ them out of winners, then losers, because I know I'm going to run out of time anyways. Ask your TO if you're confused. Usually it's bracket runners, somewhat discretion. Uh, some are generous, some are not, but make sure that you DQ after a certain amount of time, okay? You have to. If you're 20 minutes in and you're still waiting on DQs, DQ them. Just DQ them all the way, get them out, the hell out of the bracket, and let people move on. Because again, we're in a situation right now where player experience... 5D's lost at 2 o'clock, and it's 2.20, and they still haven't played. Yes, that's bad. Get all these players out of here, right? These players are playing. Uh, you have one quick match to call before you do that, yes, because you have eagle eyes and you're so smart. You can run, you can run Ryu versus Akuma. Should you do it? No, you shouldn't. And I'll explain why. You should not run Ryu versus Akuma, because if Ryu versus Akuma happens, you have to wait for these matches to finish, then this match than this match, yes? You wanna try to run columns at the exact same time through winners. Why? Two reasons. If you blast through winners, let's say a Ryu loses. Ryu goes all the way here. We haven't even played this column. Ryu will have to wait all the way from this, like 20 minutes in, they play their match, they lose. They might have to wait an hour to play, right? This is a long time to wait. Let me give you the full picture. There are one, two, three, four matches until Ryu was able to play. Like, let's start here. That's a terrible experience for Ryu. Don't blast through winners. I prefer to take a wait and see approach. If you have setups available, I recommend you wait five minutes between winners matches. Trust me, a few reasons. One, let's say that you have a stream runner that comes up to you and says, hey, Ryu is really good in your pool, and so is May from State Farm if they, let's say they win. We want to pull your winner's finals match for stream, right? Which means they're going to take your players and put them on stream. What do you say? Cool, sounds good. Ryu and May from State Farm, you're going to be on stream. They say, cool. They go up and they wait for like an hour and a half to play. That happens all the time, trust me. This is a consequence of maybe like some little iffy stream running. Uh, I have been in this situation very often. You are, as a bracket runner, are responsible for making sure that your players are not cold. Yes, your job is to run brackets as efficiently as possible. In the situation here, where Ryu loses and moves all the way to here, he has to wait. If you do all of winners immediately, yes, not only does N have to wait, in this winner's finals match, there may be a situation where you have to hold someone for stream and that match is going to take forever. If you know it's going to come in five minutes, if a stream runner says like, hey, do you have a match for me? And you say like, oh, I got this like winner's finals match coming up next. They'll go, cool, awesome. Make sure you get there in the next five, 15 minutes. You say, cool, I'll queue them up. You let them play out. It's winner side. They're good to go. Trust me, do not blast through winners. I have had situations where people do it and then they're waiting in like winner's finals of the bracket to be, play on stream for an hour. It's a bad, bad, bad way to run a bracket. Go through losers first. I said this, yes. We have these matches we can do. Don't run Ryu versus Akuma when you have all of this to take care of, yes? And what are we gonna do now? We're gonna take care of it because we have DQs, okay? In this situation, Hot Dog, DQ, they did not show up in time, yes? 5Ds moves on. In this situation, lost my mind. Maybe, let's have them show up. Oh my God, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You say, okay, cool. You're DQ'd out of winners, you're still in losers. Do you want to play? They say yes. Cool, awesome. They play, they go 03. You should have shown up on time, you would have been cold, you dummy. So Soluble Blob Guy moves on, yes? In this situation, Mortal Wombat, they're still waiting on their match, they still need this match to be reported. Ligmaga, the loser of I, they're still waiting on this match, okay? 
in this situation, Ultra Gamer, they are still not here. They did not show up for their pools. At this point, you DQ them. You move 5Ds on. Yes? At this point, let's say that you're uh, 25 minutes into the bracket. May from State Farm and Monster Mash report. May from State Farm, 1, 3 to 1. Okay? May from State Farm moves on. Monster Mash goes to Loser of I. Sick Nasty versus Bonus Kun. I've had the top player win. Sick Nasty loses 0-3 three, three to Bonus Kun. So Bonus Kun moves here. Again, Loser of J, Loser of J, Sick Nasty. Okay? At this point, we are very far into the bracket. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more matches to run. Actually, eight. Excuse me, this one. Let's go ahead and run these losers' matches first. 5Ds versus Ultra Gamer. This match has already happened. They have already. This has already been decided. 5Ds has moved on. Soluble Bob Guy versus Burger Flip. You point at the at the thing. They fight. Yes. Mortal Wombat versus Sick Nasty on the next setup. Lig Maga versus Monster Mash on this setup. At this point, you have done the hard work. The bracket kind of just runs itself. At this point, you're probably just relaxing, okay? You're probably sitting there chatting it up. It's okay, the bracket's being run. There's currently one, two, three matches being played. You have these matches. At this point, if you take a step back, yeah, you have one match to play, two match to play, and then this match, yes? So if you have these two fight now, I think it's reasonable to say that there will be enough time for them to not be cold in their loser side match. So in this situation, I would call May from State Farm versus Bonus Coon. You mark it on your sheet as they are fighting. At this point, all four setups are being used. This is actually the first time in this entire tournament all four setups are being used. It's pretty common in a 16-man bracket for it to roll out that way. 3D cues is, is weirdly conservative and two buys. Uh, this makes sense. So they're fighting it out. You wait. It's been like 5-10 minutes. You wait. Okay, cool. Matches are being reported. Soluble Blob Guy and Burger Flip. Soluble Blob Guy won 3-1. to one. Soluble Blob Guy. This match is ready to be played. I would tell both players, just to make things consistent, we want to run this one first. I would say, you're going to be fighting in a minute. Do you need a break? No? Okay. Stay right there. We'll have a setup for you in a moment. Akuma versus Ryu. On this setup, you call it out, yes, because the one setup got freed. You mark that this is in progress. At this point, May from State Farm versus Bonus Coon, it, it's a blow up. They get demolished. The match is over in like seconds. 3 0, okay? At this point, May from State Farm moves on. Bonus Coon moves to loser of M. 5D's Versiable Blob Guy, now they are free to play. We will have them play. 5Ds versus Soluble Blob Guy. Okay? At this point, Mortal Wombat versus Sick Nasty is over. It's a close 2-3 set. Sick Nasty advances. Mortal Wombat is out of the tournament. Ligmaga versus Monster Mash. Monster Mash wins 3-1. to one. You tell Monster Mash, stay there. Sick Nasty versus Monster Mash. And you point at the setup and you have them fight. Yes, at this point, the bracket's starting to run very smoothly. There's not a whole lot going on because you have done the proper setup. Players are not waiting too long. Yes, because you've thought and watched this video and understood exactly what's happening and you're godlike. Um, at this point, all setups are currently being played on. You have these matches being played. This match has already been played. May is waiting. Ryu and Akuma is playing. Sick Nasty versus Bastard M are playing. This is what a ideal bracket will look like. Yes, the only person that's waiting is Bonus Coon, which is totally fine. Some players are going to have to wait, like, a set. It gives them an opportunity to watch the match before them. That's totally fine. It gives the players the opportunity to go to the bathroom, go have a smoke, uh, you know, talk to their friends. Totally fine. A+. plus. Everything's running good. At this point, when you're approaching the end of your bracket, I want you to do something very important for me. I want you to check your work. <laughs> sit there, sit down, and check your work. Look at every single player and move them along the bracket, yes, and track, did, the, did I do this properly? Did I do this properly? Did I do this properly? We're going to get into what will happen if you make a mistake, but just make sure that you ran it right, you watched this video, you studied, you understand the concepts and why we do things the way we do them, so you get it, you are a smart cookie, 
everything's perfect, but you checked and that's awesome because you know when you hand it to the TDL desk, they're just gonna go through with their marker and highlight everything and give you a thumbs up and I don't know, like a, a candy bar. I don't know, usually you get paid a little bit. They give you a sticker or something. Any, anyways, they give you what you need to get, which is a thumbs up and encouragement and encouragement is better than any monetary reward. You checked your work, it's all good. If it's not good, you need to go talk to your game master and TO desk immediately. Just go do it. Leave the players in the dust. Be like, like, uh, like, like Roadrunner. Just spin your wheels and just zoom over to the TO desk and get help immediately. They will help you out and figure out what the hell you do to remedy the situation. In this case, everything's good. Ryu versus Akuma. Three, two. Ryu wins over Akuma. Akuma, loser of N. Master M versus Sick Nasty. Oh, excuse me. Master M Monster. Master M. What the hell is Master M? What is that? I should check my work. Is this a callback or a legitimate mistake? Well, Sick Nasty won here. Oh, Monster Mash. Okay. Sorry. My bad. Let me erase that and write it in. That's why we use pencil. Uh, Monster Mash won uh, three to two. Okay. At this point, most players are gone. You don't really have to scream anymore. You probably know who everyone is. Hey, Akuma, you're fighting Monster Mash. Monster Mash, you need a break? Cool. No, okay, you guys are good. Go. 5Ds uh, loses a soluble blob guy. 3-0. Soluble blob guy versus bonus con. You two are fighting over here. At this point, maybe you're friends with people in your bracket. At this point, maybe you're not. Mark them as playing. They're good to go. At this point, we have this match left. May from State Farm versus Ryu. Uh, I wouldn't hold this any longer. If a stream runner comes up to you and says they want it, give it to them. Otherwise, give them, like, I don't know. You have five to ten minutes after the match is over to figure out if they want to play on stream. You just run the match. May from State Farm versus Ryu. At this point, let's have Cyble Blob Guy win over Bonus Coon. Monster Mash win over Akuma. Uh, we'll have Monster Ma uh, Soluble Blob Guy versus Monster Mash on the winner's side. Uh, we'll have May from State Farm win over Ryu. And on this side, we'll have a uh, Soluble Blob Guy win. Uh, I don't know. 3-0. It's a blow-up. This is a completed bracket. I am now off-screen just going to validate this because I believe in practicing what you preach. Okay, so I've looked at this bracket. So this bracket looks good, everything looks correct. Uh, if I was the TO desk, I would give this a glowing thumbs up. Let's talk about player experiences. Yes, you ran losers first. There was only one player that had any type of bad to slightly negative experience, and sometimes it just be that way. And that is this player here, 5Ds. 5Ds played first, they lost into two DQs and only needed to go 0-3 versus Soluble Blob Guy. Could you have prevented that? In this situation, no. I put both buys on one side of the bracket. In most situations, the buys would be on the opposite side. That would help prevent this. Um, in this situation, you did everything you could for 5Ds. There's nothing you could have done to improve his player experience. Everyone else had a very nice player experience. They waited a maximum of 10 minutes between matches, which is like a totally fair and perfect amount. No one here was stressed, and it's because you ran column by column on loser side. You kept the setups as full as they could be. When people reported, you wrote down what they reported before anyone else came and talked to you. If you had two people try to tell you things at the same time, you said, wait one moment, please, and you finished writing, you validated what you wrote, and you moved on. All DQs you wrote very eloquently and ahead of time. Even though people had matches to report, you filled out the DQs so you didn't have to redo your entire bracket because you made a mistake, yes? Your bracket was run very, very, very well. Now, I know this was a lot of information. I know it was a little bit overwhelming. I want you to know that this all comes with experience. So a few things of note that you need to know in addition to this. Uh, one, I recommend you look up the baseline rules. You don't need to play the game that you're TOing, honestly. You just need to have the, the start GG page up with the rules of the actual event. Maybe it's on the actual majors, regionals, uh, locals website. Uh, it'll tell you, like, here are the stages that are banned. Here's, like, some minutia in the rules. Um, that's all important. 
Number two, you need your DQ timings from the TO desk. If it's player discretion, I recommend 10 to 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes um, for like 15 minutes DQ in uh, round one and then 20 minutes DQ out of the tournament. Uh, could be 10, 15, whatever they say, follow that. Three, there'll be a game master running around usually that has intimate knowledge of the game. If there's any disputes, you are obligated to give the correct answer. You need to go find your game master or the TO desk and get someone summoned to your station to answer the player's question. It might be something like, I want to change the song. How do I change the song? You, as the TO and the bracket runner, are not expected to know that. And don't guess. Just go find your game master. Trust me. Find someone to talk to. If you don't know how to find them, if you don't know where the TO desk is, I mean, you should because you picked the bracket, find someone near you and ask them and spread the word. And eventually, someone will come find you. Number four, players will come up to you with all sorts of things. Uh, people are human. They'll have to go to the bathroom. Um, sometimes players will cry in bracket or look distraught or upset or anxious or something. Uh, listen to them and be a human. Don't be heartless. Let people go to the bathroom. Yes. Let people have their emotions. If it starts to delay the tournament, then we have an issue. Using this method, I can run a two-hour bracket in an hour. I've run them in 45 minutes before. I've run a 32-man bracket in an hour and 15 minutes. You have plenty of time. It is your responsibility as the bracket runner to make sure that everyone has a smooth experience. And if someone's crying in the corner, let them cry. Like, give them like 10, 15 minutes. They'll come to you when they're ready to play. They're not jerks. They know that they can't delay the tournament. Um, there will be rules that you have to ensure are enforced. That people wear masks is a very common one. No drinks on the table. Don't be shy. Enforce those rules. Tell people how it is. And finally, like, make sure you have a good time. Treat people nicely. Yes, don't be a jerk. Don't be run it with an iron fist. Get to know people. That's why you're bracket running, right? Like, sure, the free entry to the venue and like 25 to 50 bucks is kind of nice. But like, in general, you are there to make sure these players have the best time possible. Wear a smile, talk with them, make them feel good. They're the people that you are here for. Uh, get to know them, make some friends, and then just go get drunk and like party with them. Yes, totally fine. I've made friends bracket running. Uh, there are players that I know whose names I whose names I know just because I happen to run their brackets like two or three times. Okay, trust me, you'll make a lot of friends this way. One more thing I forgot to mention real quick uh, in this post editing landscape: if two players don't show up for pools and they're scheduled to fight. Uh, just go ahead and advance the one whose name you like the best. In reality, it doesn't matter. You could also uh, flip a coin. Uh, but yeah, just either way, they're going to get DQ'd anyways. Just advance either one of them. It, it doesn't really matter. Tip to tail, that's how you run a bracket. Is there more that you could know? Yes. Sometimes brackets aren't run this way. Some people prefer to run winners first. I don't know why you would do that. I, every time someone tells me that bracket running winners first is optimal, I'm like, you're wrong. Like, that's not true. Like, it's definitely not optimal. Trust me. <laughs> do it this way. Run losers at priority over winners. Run winners when it's convenient and literally no one's playing. But in general, you want to run through losers. So was this video helpful for you? Did I just go on a long rant and get into the specifics? So I try to make this bracket as realistic as I could. Uh, what are some situations that you've run into that I have not described? I'd love to hear it in the comments. If you have any like crazy bracket stories, I'd love to hear those as well. If you have any other ways to run brackets, is there something here that I'm like, Don, like this is not how you run a bracket. You run winners first and here's the exact reasons why. Um, list them off. I read every comment that's left and uh, I respond to pretty much all of them. So I uh, would really appreciate that. And also, if you can give a like and subscribe, I always appreciate those. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. And if you can uh, please contribute a like and subscribe, I always appreciate those. Looking through this, I think it would have been really funny to have a like and subscribe fight, but unfortunately, I'm not that clever and don't have that much foresight. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you here at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. Please drop that like and sub. It helps tremendously. And uh, yeah, if uh, you see me running a bracket, and yeah, um, I hope to run your next bracket. I still actively run brackets. I do it pretty much every major I go to. I run at least one just because it feels good. So uh, yeah, support your locals, support your majors, show up in person, run some paper brackets, and have a good time. See ya.